Laryngoscope is a device that is used to visualize the larynx and adjacent structures mainly for inserting a tube that is the ED tube into the tracheobronchial tree. The first laryngoscope was invented by Manuel Garcia in 1854 and then Alfred Kirstein developed direct vision laryngoscope in 1895. It was popularized by Sir Robert McIntosh and Sir Ivan Magill early in 1940. It was during the insertion of a Boyle Davis gag that Machindos conceived the idea of his laryngoscope, which is still the most popular design in use today. In 1913, Chevalier Jackson was the first to report a high rate of success for the use of direct laryngoscopy as a means to intubate the trachea. A laryngoscope may be used for various purposes, including endotracheal intubation, insertion of nasogastric tube, transosophageal echocardiac probe insertion, foreign body removal, upper airway lesion biopsy, and visualizing and assessing the upper airway, including the vocal cords and the larynx. There are various types of laryngoscopes, direct rigid laryngoscopes, indirect rigid laryngoscopes which use fiber optics or mirrors or prisms and then there is a video laryngoscope and then flexible fiber optic endoscopes and there are also optical stylets. In this video we will be talking about direct rigid laryngoscopes. Now direct rigid laryngoscopes are the traditional and still routinely used technique for the vast majority of the tracheal intubations. The use of direct laryngoscope is termed as direct laryngoscopy. It is the dominant modality since 1940s. The advantages include a quick to use, economical, rugged and universally available. The disadvantage being alignment of visual, oral and pharyngeal excesses is needed. The laryngoscope has different parts such as the handle, the blade and the hook. The handle is held in the hand during use. It provides the power for the light. It accepts the blade that have a light bulb to have a metallic contact which completes an electrical circuit when the handle and the blade are in the working position. The handles containing batteries or using fiber optic illumination contain a halogen lamp bulb. Now the Padil Syracuse handle is a special type of handle in which the blade can be adjusted and locked in four different positions at 45 degree, 90 degree, 135 degree or a 180 degree positions. Now the handle comes in different lengths. The short handles are particularly useful when the chest or brass contact the handle during use. And then there are various size markings for laryngoscopes for different populations. Triple zero is for small premature infants, double zero for premature infant, and then zero for neonate. Now size 1 is for small child, 2 for a child, and size 3 for a normal adult, size 4 for a large adult, and size 5 for extra large adult. Now coming to the blade, the blade has a base, a heel, and a tongue, or a spatula. The base attaches to the handle, and there is a slot for engaging the hinge pin of the handle. The end point of the base is called the heel. The main shaft is known as the tongue or the spatula. It compresses and manipulates the soft tissues, especially the tongue and the lower jaw. The flanks of the blade projects off the side of the tongue and is connected to the tongue by the web. It also guides instrumentation and deflects tissues from the line of vision it also determines the cross-sectional shape of the blade. The tip of the blade 
contacts either the epiglottis or the vellicula and directly or indirectly elevate the epiglottis. The tip is thickened and transversely beaded to minimize mucosal damage. Now coming to the types of the blade. The most popular blade is that of the Macintosh and the tongue has a gentle curve that extends to the tip. In cross section, the tongue, the web and the flange form a reverse Z. It is positioned in the vellicula anterior to the epiglottis, lifting it out of the visual pathway. The size ranges from 1 to 4 and most adults require size 3. The cervical spine movement is greater with the Macintosh blade compared with the Miller blade, a light wand or the Clyde scope. Now there are many modifications of the Macintosh blade. We would look into some of the popular modifications. The first is left-handed Macintosh blade. Here the flange is on the opposite side. It is mainly used for abnormalities of the right side of the face or the oropharynx. And this is particularly useful for left-handed intubators. And it is also useful for intubating in the right lateral position. And also during positioning of tracheal tube directly on the left side of the mouth. Next is polio blade. The blade is offset from the handle at an obtuse angle that is 135 degree. Originally designed to facilitate intubation in iron lung respirators during polio epidemic, it is useful in intubation in iron lung respirators or body jackets. In obese patients, in case of breast hypertrophy or kyphosis with severe barrel chest deformity and persons with short neck and restricted neck mobility, the disadvantage of this blade are that little force can be applied and the control is minimal. Now, the Fink blade has a wider tongue with a sharper curve at this tail end. The height of the flange is reduced and the light bulb is more towards the distal end. The next blade is the Bijari Geofrida blade. Here the flange is removed except for a small part that encases the light bulb. So there is less chance to damage the upper teeth and the blade is designed for patients with limited mouth opening, prominent incised teeth, and the receding mandible or a short and thick neck, and in case of the anterior larynx. Next is the Miller blade, which is a straight blade, commonly used for pediatric population. The tongue is straight with a slight upward curve near the tip. In cross section, the flange, the web, and the tongue form a C with the top flattened. Some variations of the blade have the lamp socket on the tongue while others have it on the web. It is positioned posterior to the epiglottis, trapping it while exposing the vocal cords and the glottis. The size ranges from 0 to 4. Now the Miller blade, that is the straight blade, has its own modifications. Another type of blade is the flexible tip blade, also known as the McCoy blade. In this blade, there is a hinged tip that is controlled by a lever attached to the proximal end of the blade. When the lever is pushed toward the handle, the tip of the blade is flexed. The advantage of this hinged tip is that it is helpful when a difficult intubation is encountered. Even if the blade does not improve the view of the larynx, it may improve the likelihood of successful intubation by elevating the epiglottis. It may be especially useful in patients with large epiglottis. The flexible tip blade results in significantly less force being applied and a reduction in the stress response 
compared with the Macintosh blade. There is yet another type of blade, also known as thal or suction blade. These are modified Macintosh and Miller blades with suction port near their tip. The suction channel is connected up to the handle and has a finger control valve to control the suction.